Hey guys, just wanted to do my reaction review to um, The Flash Season 5, Episode 11, Seeing Red. And, you know, like I, like I mentioned in like a previous video, I'm still, okay, I'm, I was able to, you know, get some, I was able to, you know, get my computer back up and running, but in terms of video editing and the Patreon stuff, that's still a work in progress and that throughout the week that hopefully get worked out by the time I do reaction videos by next week. Um, but yeah, I'll just keep, I will keep you posted throughout the video, throughout the, throughout the week about this. Um, anyway, uh, so this episode we had basically, um, Dr. Ab Amber, Dr. Amber's coming home and just bringing, um, Orlin Dwyer cicada food and like he's still you know he's still been hiding out ever since the 100th episode for weeks um chris klein still continues to i feel like he has this frozen like angry look on his face where it just kind of just looks like he's pooping or just smelled a fart and and anyway she's just egging him on to continue his killing spree and it turns out that they're able to I guess he's been able to kill different metas at a faster rate, including an accomplice of Norvok, who is basically Amulet Black's um, right-hand man from season four. He killed one of his accomplices when they're trying to, I guess, like rob a place, and and we also and so they realized like he was back on a killing spree, like he killed three metas, and you know, and like. I think like in over the course of a couple of days, which is as much as he would. So they realized that somebody that he had like a list of like convicted felons who would become who would become metas, and it turns out the only way he would have access to this is, you know, somebody there's it was an inside job, you know, somebody in the police, de, somebody in the police department provided it to Cicada, and Barry gets kind of testy with um. Captain Singh, because of the fact that during one of the encounters um, between Cicada, Killer Frost, Ralph, and Nora and Barry, um, she's able to. I mean, Killer Frost is able to, you know, sub, you know, subdue Cicada momentarily, but then has to turn back into Caitlyn or to aid um, a meta that he just stabbed, who actually was named um, Rochelle. Oku Okuye, if I'm ho I hope I'm pronouncing this right, who's actually actually who's Candace's stunt double. So it was cool that she, I thought she looked familiar. I, I remember her seeing her in an interview, but it was kind of cool. She got this like little cameo in here, and and of course there's a where they're trying to go to that um, that person's aid. Um, Cicada gets the drop on Nora, and able to essentially like break her back and paralyze her in the same vein that zoomed it to Barry a few years back and she and it's like she's lying in this hospital you know Barry and Iris are worried about her because I guess because she was hit with, with cicadas like some cicadas dagger um it's causing her healing factor to act far slower like she, her neck even her neck is broken and even she's and even Norris terrified about you know if, if she's never you know, the thought of maybe it might be permanent like, because they don't know how long it's going to take for her to heal. And so it, it sounds kind of, it's like, Barry's pretty much enraging. You can see it's like kind of like slowly boiling to the surface and like Norvok noticing it and the other metas they try to round up to put into witness protection through F, through Cecile's FBI contacts. Um Noticing it, and we also get like a reappearance for not just Norvok, but I'm also um, Peekaboo, and I guess like a, there's kind of this like Cisco. I mean, I guess they have Cisco like absent from this episode because they're already juggling so many characters at once throughout the show. So they have like so so they have Killer Frost and uh, Ralph having these like one on ones, and Killer Frost, even though it should have been obvious to Caitlin. That she's worried about the fact that they're working on this metahuman cure. Um, that because when that Caitlin might be tempted to, 
you know, use the powers on her, use the cure on herself and get rid of both her Killer Frost powers and the persona. Um, and Ralph has to tell her how when DeVoe suppressed Killer Frost, that Katie, that the only thing Katie cared about was trying to get her back. It was kind of alleviated her fears. Um, yeah, like a little, they gave like a little bit of backstory to Norvok about how he worked at a zoo during, um, like, I guess prior to the particle accelerator explosion in which he tried to help a kid who's, who was being attacked by a snake because the explosion kind of caused all the snakes to get out of their um, exhibits and cages. And the, um, and of course, by grabbing that snake and getting hit with the dark matter is why he has that like tongue, that snake like tongue in his eye. And now he became like, you know what? I'm not helping out any, you know, I'm not helping out anybody. I'm just looking out for, looking out for myself. And more, and Cecile having to tell Barry that because of her powers of empathy that don't let this don't let this anger for your child being hurt consume you like it did with Cicada. And it, it almost does because there's and it was luckily that, you know, Nora was, you know, slowly healing as every, you know, as we all expected to. Um, but Iris didn't notice like Sherlock starting to ask her a bunch of questions about the investigating her and ask her like questions about the speed force language and the flash museum even asking is like if they could bring the information of the flash museum to him or if they or if he can take her into the future to go to the flash museum just to try to figure out like who is her accomplice and iris takes notice of that and gets pissed off and is like gets defensive about sherlock investigating his family And just tells her to basically back off. He naturally doesn't, but and I'm I'm not surprised that you um that I expect this to be Iris's knee jerk reaction to all of this because you know it's like she she has a daughter from the future. She's gets to be a mom. You know she's she's so happy with the fact that she's been able to bond with them in spite of the rocky start they got off to. And if it wasn't for the previews of this next episode, looking like they're going to go into like Nora's mind, like Inception style, and presumably finding out about her alliance with Thawne, then I probably, then I would probably be more upset about the fact that she wouldn't take a step back and think about how, okay, Barry and Joe lied to her for a year about how the former was the Flash. Joe lied to her about her mom, her mom being dead. Um, then there's when the mom did come back into their lives she wasn't exactly forthcoming about how she was pregnant with wally and they had a, and she had a brother then she wasn't necessarily forthcoming i mean she initially withheld that fact from joe and barry for until like the season two the, the mid-season finale for two so you kind of think that it's like I mean, yeah, she wants to look for the best in people, but you figured at this point she would have like a healthy amount of skepticism about, okay, I'm going to have people keeping secret, you know, people are going to have their secrets for one reason or another, no matter how, no matter how even close loved ones. But next week might just make that whole um, point of contention moot. And, and it was just, I think I just really enjoyed, I think, um, Jessica Parker Kennedy's performance, she's really just giving her her all to this. And, and I think it was like one of her best performances um, in this of the season. But I guess it, it's sad that I feel like I don't think you have to injure Nora just to have her just kind of be. I mean, yeah, she can be kind of like be like to stop acting like, you know, having or like the naive naivety and the child and the childish behavior and I guess that was one of the things that was kind of like just took a back seat and I kind of wish we see we see less of they could kind of continue with this course and not and make her a little bit less naive and less like immature because it's like it what was the point of saying that she was 27 years old if she didn't have any maturity that came with it um so so it was nice to get a break from that. And it was nice that, you know, you know, Barry gets his own arc for this. Cause I know, he, I know people have complained that it hasn't focused too, the show hasn't focused too much on Barry. 
Um, so yeah, it was, you know, a family member being injured, including a child, which is, you know, a person, child being injured or close to almost getting killed is probably like, you know, anybody's worst fear. So it, it brought out like a level of, it brought out like a, it was bringing out a level of anger that I don't think I've seen in Barry since, um, right after Zoom killed Henry Allen and, and basically he just starts like wailing on him. And even when Nora's like, you know, back up and healing and, you know, they're monitoring his, the suit's vitals of, um, a Barry, they realize is like, they're realizing like how much, like, like the m- amount of energy he's putting into his lightning bolts and his punches and how much, you know, not even cicada can sustain like at that level of injury. And they realize he's going to kill him. And then it takes Nora having to run out there and tell, you know, bring Barry back to his senses, but that, but that also creates a plot convenience that allows him to get distract for Barry to get distracted and for Cicada to escape. Um, and also because Killer Frost was getting tired and put up a pretty good fight against Cicada, um, the point where he even cuts him and gets a piece and gets like some, some of his blood on her, like ice dagger, which she later uses for her metahuman cure. Cause it needed like a sample of, of a meta who hasn't been bonded with dark matter for, I guess, more than six months or something like that. And, you know, she, you know, her like freezing the dagger in place where Cicada was trying to call it back, call, call it back to him and then allowing Barry to get his powers back and wail on Cicada was a pretty cool scene. And that was saying is like, oh, because, and I thought, you know, peekaboo, because like he sabotaged, took out like the landing gear for the helicopter, then it was up to Ralph and it was supposed to be Pikachu to help get every all the meds onto the helicopter to escape, but she was like everyone's every meta for themselves, and I thought, okay, bitch. And it was eventually Norbach who decided that every you know, that he made he wanted to make sure all the meds got on the helicopter with Ralph using his powers of elasticity to get everybody on the chopper when it couldn't land. And it even got to the point where when the dagger was being called back to Cicada, that it almost like went through a wall. And I thought it like, oh my God, I was going to kill Norvok, but Gra- well, Ralph grabbed him at the last minute and was able to, and the chopper was able to get them off to witness protection. And now it's like Cicada is going to be laying low again for a while. So it's just like, okay, so he's going to spend a, more episodes like taking a back seat. And it just feels like, this cicada, I mean, the cicada thing. I feel like should have been um, wrapped up in the hundredth episode, and I feel like they're just kind of just looking for like plot conveniences, like you know, kind of keep him around. But it seems like this is this time. It seems more deliberate since they're going to focus more on apparently the the Nora and Thawn dynamic, just based on the previews and. I guess, I mean, that's, I guess that's my biggest problem is the fact that it's like they haven't figured out, it feels like they're just, they still insist on having Cicada be the big bad when there's, they're kind of just dragging, is not much justification for a reason why they haven't, shouldn't have been able to defeat him by now. Um, it's just, you know, it's, as I said, to like plot armor and, you know, you know, I like the shot of um, when like, He's looking when Sherlock's looking at the monitor, trying to decipher all the Speed Force language. He notices that the Nora's handwriting and has the doesn't match the handwriting of some of the other stuff written in the journal. So, presumably, it's Thawne's handwriting. And it's nice that they have this whole shot of who the mat of asking like who the who must be the mastermind, and then it's like a, and you can see his like reflection in the monitor is like. Because you know it's like oh it's like Wellsabard and I thought they'd be kind of be a jump cut to the future and I, like it was like shipped to like a close up on Wellsabard and him talking to Nora in the prison cell but we didn't get that it was a little disappointing but as much as I said I liked um, last week's episode more than most people I I would probably be inclined I kind of feel like this this episode should have been. Um, the mid-season premiere. I know they deal with. I know they deal with deal with Nora's arc of coming to terms with Thawne's actions, but I think I found this episode like more enjoyable than 
slightly more enjoyable than last week. So I gave it like an 8.5 out of 10. How do you guys feel about it? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you like this video, like, share, and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.